I'd like to share three properties of a contango, which is the fancy term for an upward sloping forward curve. Those three properties are what the contango says about the net convenience yield, what it says about the roll return, and its relationship to normal backwardation. And then I'll do the same thing for a curve that's in backwardation or inversion. So I've imagined here a steeply upward sloping forward curve, and this is a contango, where we are here in January, and the spot price is $20. So that's the red dot. Spot price would be denoted as sub zero. The forward curve then is simply the set or series of observed or trading futures prices on the forward delivery months. Mine here is steeply upward sloping, but the upward slope indicates contango and the definition of contango then is that the spot price in this case twenty dollars is less than the price of the near-term futures contracts i'll just say f sub t is in turn less than the price of the more distant futures contracts so contango put simply is futures prices that are increasing with maturity so in terms of three things or properties I would say about the contango. The first goes back to the lease rate and the cost of carry model. I covered lease rate in the previous video, but if we think about the forward price is expected to be a function of the spot price grown at the risk-free rate minus the lease rate. I covered this in the previous video. Then contango is consistent with or indicates here that the risk-free rate is greater than the lease rate. Or if we want to tease that out more specifically, contango indicates that the risk-free rate is greater than the net convenience yield, which is the convenience minus the storage cost. The second feature of the contango is the negative roll yield. So if we're, in, we're here at January, and just imagine that we enter into a long position in the December contract. So that's 11 months forward. And we would denote that contract F011. The price of that contract is $90. F sub zero because that would be a price that trades at, at time zero January for a contract in 11 months. If we enter the long position, that's a promise to purchase the commodity in December at this predetermined price of $90 so that the strike price is $90 when we enter the contract. And then we might also, to abbreviate, denote this F sub 11. So it's 11 month futures contract price of $90. <clears throat> okay. So in January, we entered that contract. And now just imagine going forward three months in time. And I'll expand this out. And now we're in April. We still are along that contract where the delivery price was $90 for December. But now we're, th we're now in April. So the December contract is now an eight month contract. And I will make an important assumption here, which may or may not be true. I'll assume a static forward curve. In other words, as we go forward in time, this forward curve doesn't twist or shift up or down. And so that means if we get to April and there's been no change in the forward um, shape of the forward curve, the spot price is probably still $20. No change in the spot price as well. And the December price of the December, the future price, the December futures price would be $86. And we can visualize this as sliding down the forward curve. As we get closer to maturity, that futures price will tend to converge to the spot price. Well, our delivery price was $90. We entered that contract in December. And so we're experiencing a negative roll yield. Or specifically, if we're in April, these are fairly liquid contracts. Let's presume we can close out this contract. We had a long position, we closed it out by entering an offsetting sale, but we would have a $4 loss and that's the negative roll yield. Again, visualized as the price 
the futures price declining as the maturity shortens and converges on this spot under the assumption that the spot and the forward curve are not changing. So in contango, that roll yield is negative. We entered at 90. If we sell or close out at 86, it's a $4 loss. Sell or close out, we experience losses. That's for the long position, of course. If it's a short position, it's the opposite. In contango, the short would expect a positive roll yield or positive roll return. The third feature is that the natural state, or what we might expect, is a contango, which is a function of what we observe in the futures prices. But we might expect, we would still expect a uh, normal backwardation. So contango is the shape of the observed curve, but normal backwardation would be, if we're here in December, in January, normal backwardation refers to the December futures contract price being less than the expected future spot price in December. So visually, that's if we're here in January, maybe the expected future spot price is up here, but normal backwardation is when this forward price is less than the expected future spot price. The way that I think about this is that contango is something we sit here in December and we observe it. But normal backwardation is unobservable because we have to wait to get to December to see what the actual spot price will be. As of January, December's spot price is merely expected, hence the importance of the notation. But my point was to say that in the normal state of things, pun in, no pun intended, a typical commodity, we probably expect a contango due to storage cost and maybe lack of convenience, but we would also expect normal backwardation. So contango plus normal backwardation. Okay, that was the third feature. Then if I just take all three of those and imagine them now in a scenario of backwardation. Notice, I'm not calling this normal backwardation. I'm calling this backwardation because backwardation is the fancy term for inverted curve. And like contango, backwardation is observed. So in this case, my spot price is 100. And then I have futures prices that are declining with maturity. And so that's the definition of backwardation. I usually think of oil because oftentimes oil is in backwardation owing to its high convenience yield. So now I can apply the same three features, but this time to backwardation or an inverted curve. And that first point is that if the theoretical futures price is a function of the spot price grown at the risk-free rate minus the yield, that backwardation implies the risk-free rate is less than the lease rate or less than what I call the net convenience yield, which seems to be the case often for oil. My second property then is the roll yield. Now this time, if we start in January, enter into a December contract, that's F11, for a promise to purchase this commodity in December and pay the predetermined delivery price of $30. And then we imagine going forward three months, so now we're at April, and then we make an, that important assumption of a static curve, including the spot price. Now our December contract is an eight month contract, but if the forward curve didn't change visually, it's as if we moved up this backwardation as the futures price converges toward the spot. And in backwardation, you'll notice it's a gain. So we have a delivery price of 30 on the long. If we want to close it out, we enter an offsetting order to sell that closes us out, but it's a $4 gain. So if in backwardation, the long position 
has a positive roll yield or positive roll return. On the other hand, a short position would expect a negative roll yield. And finally, similarly, this is a backwardation. We can have a backwardation that is consistent with a normal backwardation, which is to say an expected future spot price that is higher or greater than the forward price. And by the way, we could have an expected future spot price that is lower than the forward price. And technically, that would be a normal contango. So this would be, we observe the backwardation, but we could still have a backwardation with normal contango. We can have a backwardation with normal backwardation. So those are the three features of the of the observed contango and in this case the observed backwardation. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel.